Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Chris Cook's video lectures for the English department and dual enrollment program at Southeastern Louisiana University. Today we're going to be talking about uh, rhetorical analysis, specifically uh, ad analysis. Most likely if you're seeing this video you're taking my course and we have chosen some, uh, some commercials to review. So let us talk a little bit today about the best approach that you can take for your essay um, in order to make sure you succeed. So first and foremost, you have to know the purpose or goal um, of this assignment is figuring out was the advertisement effective. Uh, most of your thesis statements are going to look pretty much the same. Uh, there's only two or three ways you can say it. So most of your thesis statements are going to look pretty much the same. There's only a few ways that you can say an ad is effective, not effective, or it is effective because of X, but not because of Y and Z. Um, so your thesis statement is most likely going to answer was the ad effective and in what ways. You know, you'll forecast your main points. And then what would be great is if you could also start um, creating a trajectory for your essay to answer the question, why does that matter? We'll get to that a little bit more later, but that's going to answer sort of the relevance of why you're even writing the essay. So, one of the biggest problems that I find uh, that students run into is that they create too much summary and not enough of an analysis. What I mean by that is uh, they'll devote two, two and a half pages to describing the advertisement and then maybe say four or five words about, you know, what techniques are being used that are effective. That should not be the case. And it should not even be 50-50. It should probably be closer to, I don't know, let's say 85-15 or 80-20, with that 80% being your own analysis, your wonderful critical thinking skills applied to the essay. Um, and the rest of it is just some summary. Remember, you do have to provide a little bit of context and describe the ad because you're going to be looking at the different pieces and parts of the ad that are either, are either ineffective or used not so well or are great at uh, persuading people. So you'll want to think about those things um, and use that as part of your summary, but you're not going to want to devote too much space to it. So what exactly are you going to be talking about? Well the things that you will have to describe and then dissect and analyze are things such as the music and lighting. For example, um, you know, a lot of commercials use bright lighting and fun music. Let's say a Coca-Cola commercial typically looks like a rock concert or, you know, looks like Beyonce's next big tour. Um, it'll make it feel fun and upbeat and happy. Now contrast that with commercials that use somber lighting, maybe just you know light mellow piano or something like that so you're going to want to think about why did they use this specific piece of music or why did they use you know fun lighting as opposed to somber or black and white lighting or something like that and does that effectively persuade the reader sorry the viewer to um, feel a certain way when you're looking at that commercial when you're viewing it think about camera angles and editing too you know You'll see some advertisements use really fun, quick, jumpy camera angles and stuff like that to make it feel like action. You know, you're, you've got your characters running around and doing fun stuff, and so the, the camera angles reflect like an action movie or, you know, like just a fun uh, concert, as opposed to the more somber, slow dissolves and fade ins of something that's supposed to make you feel sad or angry. Um, think about the fonts and graphics as well. A lot of people forget to look at if, let's say, the advertisement uses words. Are they using bright colors, reds, purple, stuff like that that's attention grabbing? Or is it something serious? Is this company trying to convey that they are a very serious company, business-like, you know, um, something that you can rely on because for a hundred years we've been around and we're trustworthy. We're not fun. We're businessy. you know. Think about things like that. But what is the most important thing that you're most likely going to look at and observe in the commercial in order to analyze the people in the commercial? So 90% of the commercials you see will have people. All right, They're going to look at um, a person and they're going to use that person in subtle ways to make you feel a certain way. So look at the people in the commercial and analyze their body language. Um, their facial expressions, their tone of voice, 
gestures, mannerisms, um, all that stuff is really important and tells a story. So you can even see this picture here. If I were to ask this little girl here, how are you feeling today? She might say, I'm all right. She says with a tone of voice that's really sad, and slumped shoulders and a little hand on her face there. Well, if you just told me in the commercial, she says she's all right. If I haven't seen the commercial, I have no clue that that's not telling the whole story. What you're looking at is the sad eyes, the somber voice, the, the, the slumped shoulders, you know. So tell me what's going on in the commercial because that's trying to convey some sort of feeling. You're also going to want to look at dialogue. Um, direct quotes are great. You know, you want to look at why somebody's uh, saying that. They pay advertisers um, and, and people in the advertisement department in the advertising department lots of money to create effective dialogue specific word choices uh, are important in order to convince you to feel a certain way about a product so look at those things analyze them dissect them and really chop up the layers and decide what is working in this commercial what isn't uh, these word choices weren't really that great because of X Y and Z but uh, this specific line about this is great and you know that's the only thing that anyone will remember from the commercial that kind of thing really helps to, uh, to make your analysis pop. You're also going to want to identify the target audience. right? Um, you might not even be the target audience. Perhaps you chose a commercial that is for, um, let's say, 65-year-old retirees, and it's, uh, it's about life insurance, and that's not something you're concerned about right now. But maybe you still think the commercial is effective for the target audience, so it's going to be important to say, what audience that the commercial is aimed towards. Um, it might be very broad, it might be very specific. Maybe it's a Coca-Cola ad targeting young people that go to concerts. You know, oh, if you want to have more fun at the concert, crack open a Coca-Cola and enjoy your favorite beverage while it's hot outside of the festival. You know, it's, they're not targeting the 65-year-old retiree who's, who wants to dance around at the, at the next Taylor Swift concert. So identify the target audience and um, you could just, that's going to help you decide whether or not the ad is effective or ineffective. Also strongly consider what is the advertisement actually selling. In a lot of cases it's not a specific product. Sometimes it's just the brand name. Sometimes they're just trying to gain a better reputation. Maybe they're, maybe the specific company that you chose is wading into politics. Maybe they're trying to um, put their thumb on the scale on, on a, a specific side, a political uh, stance is what they're taking. So look at that ad and decide what is this company trying to accomplish with this advertisement. Most of the time it's just to make a bunch of money, right? Let's be honest here. Most of the time they're just trying to convince you and manipulate you into thinking this company is great and when I go to the grocery there might be seven other brands selling this type of cookie but I want theirs. You know, they, they made me laugh last time and that's the only brand that I'm really thinking about. So um, consider all those things and decide whether or not the commercial is drawing attention to its name. Um, there are lots of commercials that might forget to tell you what exactly specific product they're selling. Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe they just want you to think about their brand overall. Um, there are a few different approaches you could take to your advertising analysis. Um, one of the things I strongly suggest, uh, and this is because I've seen a lot of students over the years use this, and they, it, their essays tend to be a little bit better if they use this approach, consider using the rhetorical appeals or, or Aristotle's um, rhetorical appeals, as they're often called. Um, these are ethos, logos, and pathos. And when you demonstrate an understanding of these concepts, um, it helps you sort of uh, shape your essay in a way that makes sense to your reader. It might also help you organize your essay. A lot of students tend to uh, mess up the organization of their advertising analysis. This might help you figure out a better way to organize your essay in a way that makes a lot of sense and is easy to read um, and logically unfold. So why might you want to use these by name? Well, consider it this way. If you if you go to a doctor and you're saying, oh, doctor, I'm clutching my, my chest, you know, I think I'm having some pain and, and stuff. They're not going to tell you, oh, well, you're having an attack of the coronary or whatever. They're just going to tell you, oh, you might be having a heart attack, right? And that has specific symptoms. Well, the same thing with, 
happens with these rhetorical appeals, these concepts, they have specific symptoms that are associated with them. And there's a long-standing tradition of using these terms when it comes to rhetoric or trying to persuade people. So there is already a definition. There's already an umbrella that's going to capture all these different symptoms. So for example, for thousands of years, you know, even back to, in the times of the ancient Greeks, they thought of trying to persuade somebody with the head, with logic, with facts and statistics and examples as logos, right? That logos is the appeal to logic. It is the um, me trying to convince you by saying, well, 75% of a Coca-Cola is sugar, so you probably shouldn't have that. That's too sugary for you. That's me trying to say, hey, you're a smart person. Let me use the stats and figures and examples. Um, so these three appeals, which are in your textbook, you're going to want to review those and most likely going to want to use those specifically. So that way um, you can sort of push your essay forward in a way that makes more sense, especially as you organize it. Another thing that you're going to want to do is think about the big picture. Now you're probably going to see me um, say this word, this phrase a million times in this class. Here's what you might end up with in your essay. I'm, if I get to the end of your essay and you haven't considered the big picture, I'm copy pasting this right into the end of your essay in my overarching comments. And um, so let's let's even go ahead and read over it. Did you express the express the big picture significance, you know, the long lasting implications and cultural meaning? Right. So does your when you're average, when you're analyzing an ad. Um, did it change advertising in some sort of way? Did it do something new that every other um, advertiser and or every other company is going to want to try now? Did it, did it change the whole um, begin, the whole game? Um, has this advertisement demonstrated a perfect way for people to be persuaded? You know, is this is this the right way to persuade people of this generation or of this specific target audience or, or you know, this the 21st century? Um, has your analysis, un analysis uncovered something profound about human nature and about the way we are persuaded? Um, so a lot of times you have to think about maybe for thousands of years, if we're still using ethos, logos, and pathos, maybe those are the ways that we as human beings um, are persuaded. We haven't evolved that much and just you know, sometimes we just uh, think with our hearts. You know, maybe you're looking at the advertisement and you're like, well, it's really boring when they use statistics, but when they start talking about um, this specific thing, it angers me or it makes me fearful, and that's what's going to get me to be motivated this way. So maybe your advertisement is revealing something about human nature, right? Um, and maybe it's, it's the advertisement... Uh, sort of highlight something that uh, a connection between social norms and persuasion and about the way we were persuaded maybe in our society uh, there's a focus on let's say the heart or there's a focus on um, famous people you know ethos is, a, is the use of you know credible sources in some cases but also um, oftentimes just famous people and, and notable figures so maybe as a society, we are really easily persuaded when they throw Drew Brees in there to, to try to sell you a sandwich or a car. So tell me at the end of the essay, what's at stake here? Why should I care if this specific advertisement is effective, is not effective, or is kind of effective in some ways but not in others? Why should I care? You have to be able to answer that question. So let's talk a little bit about using sources in your ad analysis. First, answer this. You can answer this in the comfort of your own home or wherever you're viewing this. Um, even if you want to do it out loud, you might look weird, but hey, what are you an expert in? Think about that for a second. If you're taking this class, you're likely a dual enrollment student, which means you're a high school student. So answer me, what are you an expert in? Most likely, just being you, right? You don't have a high school diploma yet, most likely. If you're in my college class, you might even be just be like a freshman or a sophomore or something, unless you're a non-traditional student. So likely you don't have a degree in anything. You don't have 10 or 20 years in a specific field or profession. You're really an expert in just your own personal life. You might not even be an expert in being a high school student, because let's be honest here, are you great at it? You know, you might ask yourself that. So 
what you're really going to want to do in this ad analysis is not just use your opinions because you're not an expert in psychology and advertising and stuff. So pretend that you're a lawyer, right? You're putting this specific ad analysis on trial and you're going to want to persuade using experts and witnesses. So if you're putting somebody on trial, you bring in the forensics people and you bring in the you know, um, the people who are witnesses to this and stuff. So, and you're trying to convince me, your reader, I'm your jury, and anybody else in the class is your jury, and they're not gonna be convinced if you don't bring in lots of experts and sources that make your case for you. So what kind of sources are you gonna wanna use? You're going to think about, um, think about advertising executives who've been in the business for 30 or 40 years, they paid the big bucks to make those decisions when it comes to commercials and stuff and what goes on the air. Think about experts in psychology or marketing, you know, people who know about consumer behavior and, and what type of tactics work to get you to go out and spend your hard-earned cash on something. Um, an example might be an article by a psychologist or an advertiser about how colors make us feel when we see them in an ad. So a lot of times we'll just see like a print advertisement and they'll use, let's say it's Arby's or McDonald's or something, and they're using lots of bright reds and yellows. Well, it's because many psychologists and, and marketing people say that warm colors make us feel a little bit hungrier, and they make you want to go out and do something and feel passionate about something. So you might get hungry and might have to go out and get that new Big Mac or something, right? So think about uh, what types of sources you're going to use and use credible sources in the field um, in this specific field. That way you can persuade me that you know what you're talking about. Here's just a quick example. All right, let's look at this. We'll read this together. Coca-Cola successfully uses pathos to sell the idea of cultural diversity. This commercial uses three techniques, emotional transfer, body language, and song choice. Creating this commercial about America being unified sheds positive light on Coca-Cola and will make more consumers want to support them. This is emotional transfer. Emotional transfer is the process of generating emotions in order to transfer them to a product. According to Antonio Lopez, author of Article Analysis. So there you go, there's a source. Obviously this person um, is discussing products and businesses and how um, we transfer emotions onto a product or onto a business. Um, so if they use a commercial that does a certain thing, you're going to feel the same way about it. Let's look a little bit more at the same, this is coming from the same students I said. Coca-Cola uses emotional transfer by causing the consumer's positive, peaceful attitude about the ad to transfer over to a positive, peaceful attitude about Coca-Cola. According to J. Francis Davis, media education specialist, in commercials, pictures are meant to elicit specific and planned emotional reactions in the consumers. Whenever consumers see Coca-Cola products in the store, they will feel positivity toward the brand. By Coca-Cola selling cultural diversity, they also sell their products. So what this student is doing is using these sources to show, look, here's this media education specialist or advertising executive, and they know that they can elicit specific planned responses from the person who sees the ad. So Coca-Cola might make you want to feel a specific way, positive, peaceful attitude about Coca-Cola. Look, we're culturally diverse here and we're peaceful and we're promoting positivity. So now you'll think about their products that way. You will see a Coca-Cola and it makes you feel that way, right? So, um, but you're not an advertising executive. You're not a psychologist. So I can't just trust you to be like, well, Coca-Cola makes me feel positive about this commercial. So now I feel positive about Coca-Cola. Um, so you're going to want to find those sources that support your arguments in the essay, and that's going to help you really do a good advertising analysis. So let's talk about a couple of pitfalls that I've seen students make in the past. All right, so there are some ways that good ads just go bad, but you forget about that. So you might be describing, here's, here's one example, pathos overload. Okay, so you might be telling, explaining to me Oh, this advertisement about the, the puppy is like, you know, for 10 cents a day, you can save these animals. And they use the really sad, you know, in the arms of the angel commercial, and Sarah McLaughlin sings a little sad song. And we, we start seeing all these pictures of these sad doggies, you know, and they've been abused and mistreated. Well, that's in some cases going to actually turn off the 
intended target audience. I am a dog lover. And I cannot watch those commercials with the sad puppies and stuff. I want to save them all, but I, I don't even get to the end of the commercial to find out where I'm supposed to send my money to because I just can't watch those. So you might even be looking at an ad where they've found their target audience, they know exactly what they're doing, but they've put too much pathos. Or maybe they've tried to anger their audience and they've made them too angry and so they don't even know where to send the money to. They're just, they just know they're angry. But do they know what they're supposed to do with that anger? Do they know what they're supposed to do with that sadness because the commercial is just too much emotion and then we don't even know what we're supposed to do about it, right? So that's one possibility. Another way that ads have gone bad before, uh, cultural insensitivity. Let's think about that, uh, the Pepsi commercial where, uh, who are the Kylie Jenner or one of the Kardashians or something like that. So she's a part of a protest movement um, and she's making it look like the most fun thing ever. It's a party. And she is walk, and she walks up to these police officers and riot gear and just hands them a Pepsi, and then suddenly everybody's getting along. Well, it was a little culturally insensitive because at the time lots of stuff was going on, and the target audience felt offended because they're like, "No, we're going to these marches, and some of these marches are tense, and you're making light of it, making it look like a party, but really they're more important than just a concert in the streets where we just share a Pepsi with police officers and riot gear, um, which are actually tense moments, right?" So Pepsi offended their own target audiences and made people not want to buy Pepsi anymore. Then they, they, they had to pull the commercial. So you might sit, be saying in your commercial, oh, look, it's really fun, and they make me feel positivity towards Pepsi. But did they, or did they mess up, right? Um, another way that ads can sometimes go bad is, let's say they leave their audience outside the inside joke, right? Maybe they're making a really funny joke about a movie that you haven't seen. Maybe it's a movie that was from the 1970s and you haven't seen that movie you don't know what the joke is or maybe they're making a movie uh, making a commercial that includes jokes from the next Avengers movie right but you're not an Avengers fan so now you're outside the inside joke you don't know what they're talking about and you really don't care at that point now you're not gonna buy the product or not really pay attention to the commercial so they've lost you they missed you right so those are some things to consider when thinking about your ad analysis and, and whether or not an ad is effective or not effective one other thing I'm going to ask you to do is that you use nuance and balance, right? You're going to weigh both the strengths and the weaknesses. We always say, uh, you know, like no ad is perfect and no ad is perfectly bad. If it was perfect, it would be the only advertisement you'd ever look at again as the perfect ad. You would run out immediately with your hard-earned cash and you'd go beg your parents for money and you'd have to go get the product right now because it made you feel so strongly about it like you just left everything. The room is on fire, I have to get out of here now to go get the product. Nothing standing in my way and you drive 100 miles per hour to get to the nearest place so that you can get that product or so you can embrace that brand. And then no ad is perfectly bad. No ad is gonna make you stop buying a product if the product is good. Oh, this was a terrible product, I'll never buy this, this product again. But what if that product was free or did exactly what you needed it to do, right? They would have to do something really terrible to make you say, I will never buy from this brand again. Uh, most brands know better than to put advertisements on that would make you hate them. So what are the good parts? What are the bad parts? Some parts are probably a little good. Some parts not so great. Maybe the ad is just too long and kind of boring. Maybe the ad didn't show you everything you needed to know. So. Show that you can be an objective analyzer, right? Show that you can evaluate both strengths and weaknesses. Um, it is perfectly fine for the scale to be a little heavier on one side. This advertisement was really not effective, although this one part was kind of good. It's okay, just put something on the other side of that scale, but it's fine to make the argument that it was more effective or less effective um, because of X, Y, and Z. Um, but make sure you point out whatever it is doing well. Maybe it did have really good music choice, but nothing else, right? Or good acting, but nothing else. Um, let's look at one quick example. Here's This is from a student essay uh, about Airbnb. Airbnb displaying the faces of people with different cultures proves that they partake in the acceptance of diversity in their host staff, and they're not only making claims to gain support in their company. Although, what exactly is their company? If the viewer hasn't heard of Airbnb or doesn't know that B&B stands for bed and breakfast, they would not be able to figure out the product for the commercial. 
the only information on the company the ad provides is the logo and the logo and name. Um, this is the continuation of that. Airbnb is relative is a relatively new company, so they would benefit from more information and logical appeals. Nonetheless, what it is plentiful in makes up for what it is lacking because the commercial still helps them sell the idea of acceptance through diversity and commonality of the actors that make that sorry commonality of the actors that make the company credible. So here you could see the student saying it does have some plentiful strengths and that makes up for what it is lacking, right? It makes you feel a certain way about Airbnb that even though you might have to look up what is that exactly it is and what it's doing if you don't know what it is, you still feel a good way about it and you're like, oh, okay, and they're, they're diverse. They have a, a nice uh, accepting uh, culture in their, in their um, company, right? So these are important things you're going to want to do in your advertising analysis. So just wrapping up now, remember, a little bit of summary, but a lot of analysis. It should be mostly your awesome critical thinking skills. You have a wonderful brain. Um, use it. Most of it should be your opinion backed up by good sources. And then a little bit of summary to let your reader know what's going on in the commercial so they're not lost. Um, you're going to dissect all those pieces of the commercial, dig into the layers, get real specific, right? They talk about, you know, this first part of the advertisement versus the second part and talk about the lighting and the music and what the characters are doing. Um, utilize sources for support. You're going to need those secondary sources to go along with your commercial in order to back up your claims. Use balance and nuance, you know, a little bit of the weaknesses and the strengths. Uh, talk about what's, what is better and whether you know, maybe it's a really strong commercial but some parts were just a little bit stronger than the others. And then avoid those pitfalls we talked about um, that make for a faulty analysis. And if it's a faulty ad, make sure you identify those, those um, problems with the ad. And then finally, consider the big picture. Think about what is at stake here, why I should care as your reader. Sure, an advertisement might be good or bad, might be interesting or not, might be persuasive or not. But why should we care about whether or not we as human beings are persuaded? What's at stake here? I hope that you've uh, found this informative and uh, I look forward to seeing what you compose when I read your rhetorical analyses. Um, have a great day.